Hi there, I'm the Mechanic on Rope. Today, I've got some exciting, brand new innovations, all focused on cathode development that I am excited to share with you today. You see, in my opinion, the cathode in an aluminum air battery leaves a lot to be desired. And I think there's a lot of improvements that can be made on it, especially in a DIY setting. Let me explain further. The cathode utilizes a reduction reaction that draws oxygen in from the atmosphere to combine it at the anode with aluminum. But that reaction is sluggish at best. Researchers work to mitigate this issue by integrating catalysts into the active cathode material or by increasing the air diffusion in the cathode itself. Over the years, I've attempted to bring some of these concepts into my work myself. I've worked with a couple different catalysts and I've tried different forms of carbon. But in spite of all these improvements, it still felt to me like something was lacking. You see, powdered cathode materials like activated charcoal, they're messy and hard to work with, despite the fact that they have great air diffusion. Graphite sheets, which are easier to work with, are still quite porous, they embrittle over time, they're more expensive to get and harder to get too. My catalysts have fared slightly better. The process that I've highlighted previously where I treat graphite sheet with potassium permanganate to deposit manganese dioxide nanoparticles onto it has been a bright spot of success for me. However, it still relies on using graphite sheet. Well, today, I'm excited to introduce to you all this brand new solid cathode. It seeks to address a number of the issues that I just stated. And it's made out of cheap and readily available materials that anybody can get from their local store. You wanna know more about this? Well, that's coming up right now. Aha, it's working. I initially got the idea for making this cathode while I was reading a couple of research papers. Ironically, these papers weren't even focused on new cathode materials, but rather these methods of cathode preparation was what they used to get their cell ready for their tests. It involved mixing the active cathode materials together with Teflon and alcohol, and then pressing everything together with a hot press to produce a solid cathode. The benefits for this type of cathode jumped out at me. It was basically the improvement I was looking for. It was cheap, water resistant, and it was solid. The only problem was I didn't have a hot press. And as I found out from searching online, they're a pretty penny. So it would seem at least for now, this type of cathode is out of reach for the average Joe. Determined not to give up so easily, I opted to come up with an alternative option that costs less money. In the end, I bought this used panini press for $20. It produces heat and it presses, so it should do the job, right? Wrong. My first attempts were predictably met with failure. The press simply didn't get hot enough to do anything to the Teflon. All that happened was the alcohol evaporated due to the heat, and I was left with a powdery mess of Teflon and charcoal. Clearly, this wasn't going to work. At least, not with Teflon. But... There are other materials that held more promise. You see, in another research paper, I read the same process being used, except not with Teflon and alcohol. They used styrofoam and toluene instead. See, this has a lot more potential because styrofoam has a much lower melting temperature than Teflon. My initial tests were positive, but I found that I needed to play around with the mixture for it to work well with my super high quality panini press. I'll spare the details, but after much experimentation, I managed to successfully produce a usable product that rivals the output of a graphite sheet cathode, which was previously the best performing cathode I had. So what's in this cathode? For the active material, I'm using a combination of activated charcoal, the version I'm using here is sold as a health food product, and manganese dioxide. Not nanoparticles as used previously, but rather the powdered version found in used dry cell batteries. For the polymers, I've actually found a mixture of two to work the best. Styrofoam dissolved in toluene, here I'm using a toluene-based paint thinner, and ABS plastic dissolved in acetone. 
These materials are mixed together in the following amounts. 10 milliliters toluene, 0.6 grams styrofoam, 2 grams ABS juice, 3 grams activated charcoal, and 2 grams manganese dioxide powder. It would be worth to mention further, the ABS juice I'm using is mixed at a ratio of 4 grams ABS plastic to 10 milliliters acetone. And the manganese dioxide powder was prepared by breaking down dead dry cell batteries, putting the black powder portion in water, stirring to break down the larger clumps, decanting the mixture after it had settled, and then grinding the mixture into powder when it was dry. Also, a note about safety, because toluene and acetone are very volatile organic compounds, all of this work was done while wearing a respirator equipped to handle organic fumes and in a very well-ventilated area. Once these materials are mixed together, they should form a paste. There is some room for error in the ratios for this mixture. Depending on how accurate the measurements are, will directly affect how thick or thin the mixture is. I want it to be fairly thick because the next step is to paint the mixture onto a piece of stainless steel mesh. This will act as our current collector, and in addition, it provides some structural support. Now it's time for the panini press to take center stage. I preheated it to its max heat setting of 250 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm using these flat pieces of metal to ensure even pressure distribution on the mixture during pressing. These have also been preheated. I'm going to take my coated mesh and sandwich it in between both these metal plates. Then with the press closed, I'll use a large C-clamp to apply some constant pressure and let it sit for 15 minutes. At the end of 15 minutes, I'm left with a wonderful piece of solid cathode material. Be careful, it is a little brittle. Here, I've trimmed a bit to better fit it into my test cell. Here are some numbers. Using salt water mixed at approximately 25 grams salt to 100 milliliters water and regular aluminum foil, all at a room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius, this new cathode puts out 0.6 to 0.7 volts and 16 milliamps. In comparison, here's a piece of plain graphite sheet of comparable size under the same test conditions. It puts out 0.5 volts and 8 milliamps, clearly demonstrating this cathode is able to hold its own against my previous best material. Also, this material demonstrates high water resistance as well as no embrittlement over time. To demonstrate, I put together this little test where I sealed a hole in the base of this container with this new cathode material. I filled up the container with salt water and waited for a while. After a month or so, all the water was evaporated, but as you can see, there was zero signs of leaking. So that's my new cathode. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty excited for the success of this new material. What do you think? Is there an area where we could improve this better? If you're still with me, thanks for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, you gotta subscribe. That way, all of my latest battery content goes straight to you. It would also be a huge help if you would leave a like and a comment on this video. And if you're interested, I got tons of additional resources in the video description on aluminum air batteries, including my very own battery course that I made hosted on Udemy. So be sure to check all that out. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. MGR signing out.